wanted to take a minute and I'm going to show you how to do some very basic watercolor that you can add to your journal or just do on its own and um, hopefully just add something pretty to uh, to your work. Um, these are what I call blob roses and you can kind of see the gold that I used to finish them off with. So I'm going to show you how to do roses and I'm going to show you how to do feathers. Um, but, uh, anyway, so let's get started. So today I'm using my, uh, Daniel Smith watercolors. This is a custom palette that I put together myself with a bunch of my favorite colors. And I'm only going to use three colors today. They are going to be, uh, Quinn Coral, um, English Red Earth and sap green and for the roses that's those are the colors that I'm going to use. I am using um, this brush it's a number 12 round and it's kind of a travel brush so it kind of just fits itself in there and I have water off to the side that I'm not showing you guys. I also have like a little towel that I blot my brush on from time to time. I'll let you know when I do that. But uh, for now, I'm just going to pick up some of the uh, Quinn Coral, which I love this color. It's so pretty. Okay, and I'm going to water it down quite a bit because I want it to be fairly light. Okay, and then I'm going to add some of the English Red which is one of my favorite colors, not because of the color itself, but because of what it does to other colors. So I'm mixing that in with, with my Quinn Coral, and that's just gonna mute down that color so it's not quite so bright, and just makes this really beautiful, soft tone. Grab a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more water because I want it to be a little softer. Okay, so for this page, uh, I like to do odd numbers because they please me. And you just make blobs. So it's so, so easy. Absolutely anybody can do this technique. It's very, very easy. Oh, bump the camera. But um, I like to do odd numbers and then kind of just put smaller ones up there and so that gives me five so yeah five and then I'll come over here and I'll do oh let's just do the corner here so a nice blob there and then a smaller one here maybe that'll be a rosebud and then kind of another one there so Sorry if my hand was in the way. Okay, so then we have to let this dry a little bit. And I don't like the pages to be tilted one way or another. Because you can see how the water just kind of runs. But I'm going to go ahead and dry, the, dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's dry enough for the next step. These um, pools of paint are perfect. That's exactly what I want to happen. Um, but, um, it's dry enough for the next step. And so what I'm going to do, okay, so I'm wetting my brush, actually I'm cleaning it and then I'm dabbing it, um, on my towel because I don't want, uh, I want the color to be more pigmented. So I'm just going to go into that, uh, Quinn Coral. Uh, again, these are Daniel Smith, uh, colors, uh, and I love them so much and I have a new set of schminkas that I cannot wait to dig into but I promised my friend Allie that I would wait for her to get hers so that we could do it together so I am still using these Daniel Smiths and I love them so much if you can get a set you should definitely they make painting so much fun so now what I want to do is I'm just gonna make more blobs but inside the center of these blobs so we just want to kind of do that and then kind of go like that and just keep it inside of it 
and kind of the darker color down toward the bottom. And that's all there is to it. Now, it doesn't look like much right now, but I promise when you're done, you'll have something that you like. Okay, so see, very fast, very easy. And on camera, this looks very bright, but in person, it's a little more muted than what you're seeing on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is dry enough for the next step. And um, I actually burned my finger um, with my uh, with my heat gun. Uh, so be careful, guys. It's uh, it gets really hot. Anyway, uh, and if you don't like something, you can take your brush in there and you can move it around and make it look the way you want it to look. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to watercolor. Uh, there's traditional ways and there's non-traditional ways, but that doesn't make it right or wrong. Um, honestly, I don't know what method I use. I just do what feels nice. I like to paint the essence of something. I don't want it to look exactly like a rose. I want to paint the essence of a rose. So that's kind of my goal when I paint. Uh, so I'm going to go back in. Actually, I'm going in for the first time with you guys uh, into the sap green. And I want it to be kind of an inky consistency. And uh, that's pretty good. I am going to add a little dab of this uh, English red into it because I want um, color harmony. So with color harmony, because I use that English red with the Quinn Coral, I can use the English red with the sap green and it will harmonize the colors. So I don't know if that's a technical term. It's just the one that I uh, use to describe what I do. And I'm just keep adding until I get a color that I like in my pan. Now I'm gonna I'm not gonna go into these colors again. I'm just gonna paint from here and get I'm just gonna pick up my paint. So what I'm gonna paint now are leaves. Now rose leaves are three and five on a stalk. I am not going to uh, go into that much detail. I'm just gonna pop green in around these flowers so that it looks like there's there's greenery. Um, if I were drawing this and I would want it to be more realistic, I would take the time to draw in the stalks and uh, make it look more like rose uh, make it look more like rose uh, leaves. So right here I just want to give the idea that there is greenery and it's lush and pretty. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to be real here. Okay, so then what I would do is I would dry this as well, but I'm not going to because uh, you guys don't. Actually, yes, I will. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so it's now dry enough for the next step. It's not completely dry, but it's dry enough. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this liner brush, which is from... Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's a number one liner brush from Craft Smart, and that's what it looks like. I don't know. Pretty, it's pretty long. The bristles are pretty stiff too, it has a good snap to it. And so I just dipped my brush into water to bring it over here so it has a nice inky consistency. And then I like to have like little swirls. So I just add a few here and there. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I don't want this to look perfect. Remember, I'm painting the essence of roses. I'm not actually painting roses. Okay, so uh, then the next step is really fun because all you do is you take a gold 
and I would prefer to use a uh, paint for this but my gold paint that I would want to use is in the Shamika set and I haven't opened that yet so I'm going to use just a gold gel pen and I think this is just a cheap gel pen um, and it's gold and I'm just going to so now you can do this a couple different ways. So you can take an outline, like do you see the difference between this color, this light color here and this darker one? So you can outline that and make it look like a petal. And then outline between each one and just kind of make it look like a rose and rose petals. Uh, this I like this method a lot. It's kind of a lot of fun. And I just love the way that the gold looks on the page. It just adds a little bit of something, something. Um, so yeah, you can do that. And that's really all I'm doing. I don't care if I'm right on the line or not. I just want to add just that little detail. I don't know. If, can you see that? I think it's pretty. All right, and then this, or you can do um, this style here, which I'm not going to do. I think I'm going to do this, and then I'll show you another style on another page that I've already done. But I think I want to complete this style um, on this page because I like harmony. Remember I said har color harmony? I like harmony and methods too. So... Uh, here we go just trace around it. it does not have to be perfectly on the edge in fact I like it a little better when it isn't because it just adds a little more interest and so just want to make the essence of rose which that's how I do it and you guys can do it your way and have something totally unique and fun and enjoyable and pretty to look at and that's the whole point of you know I think watercolors that is so unique to each person who does it okay and then for the leaves I do the same thing I'm just gonna like make basic leaf shapes um, with my pen and this one could have two leaves on it And that's it. So, do you get to see that page? I I really like it. So, I'm going to finish this out right here. And it doesn't matter. There's no real wrong or right. We already established that. Oh, no wrong or right. Okay, and then isn't that something pretty to journal on? Let's see if I can move the camera a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so it's just something pretty to journal on. Now the other option when you use the gold uh, is this one here, which is I just made swirls. They look kind of like cinnamon rolls, and that's definitely an option as well. And I do them very fast, um, just swirl it on there really fast um, let me see if I can find another page that isn't written on um, okay so here is these are some orange ones with gold paint that and this gold paint is from the the Japanese set that my daughter has that I dare not say because I will say it incorrectly but those are orange ones and yeah okay well that took a lot longer than I thought it would so um, I'm going to probably do separate videos for the feathers so if you want to see those then uh, come back next time and uh, we'll sh I'll show you how to make those alrighty thank you for watching bye bye